Okay, I'm back to the stubble field today, and uh, I've been drying this thing out and then uh, reactivating it with water. And yesterday I added more turns on a secondary coil to uh, see what this will do. Now this has been running for the last couple of days just fine, and uh, the voltage is way down there, about two tenths of a volt. It's not very much, and uh, the coils underneath that copper, the red copper wire, are uh, cotton covered, um, cop uh, cotton covered copper and steel, galvanized steel, and it looks they look like this. Now this is when it's fresh, and this is after it deteriorates and the zinc is gone, and that's how the coils end up is with uh, rusty steel wire against cotton covered wire. This is pristine, and this is how it looks after it's it's deteriorated and gone down to that uh, three tenths, two to three tenths of a volt, but it stays there, and that's what I find real interesting. And the magnetic effect stays there. So anyway, around around more secondary wire, which is uh, this is the stubble field patent photographs, and uh, this is without the secondary on it, and this is with the secondary coil on it. And uh, uh, Laser Saber had enough of these windings, and his coils were fresh enough to light an LED off of the secondary. And I don't have enough voltage to do that, but I'm going to show how if I add a little bit of voltage with a capacitor, it'll fire off. So watch this LED here. Move this out of the way. You'll see this uh, go off here, and you'll hear the motor rev up too. Do that one more time here. You see that kind of flicker after I disconnect the capacitor? This is running um, almost like a, a capacitor in the coil. You can hear how the motor's revved up too. And it's going to stay revved up for a while. So what's happening here is this coil is actually acting like a big capacitor. So when I put juice into it, what I'm doing here is I'm just tapping this capacitor. I'm adding energy into that coil, and it uh, loads it up like a capacitor. Now this is what's different about these circuits, and I want to show this to people because people are trying to confuse this with some somebody else's design that acts like this. Now this is a normal electromagnet with a battery. And you can build a battery any way you want to build a battery. Hook it up to a coil of wire. And you'll drive a pulse motor. That's a normal circuit. And just normal. And you can make a battery out of copper pipe and galvanized iron or magnesium and copper, whatever you want to do, and drive a coil and make this thing happen. There's no mystery there. This is the mystery is the coil is the battery on a stubble field. And this is what makes this so unique to me is the interaction of the windings and the open-endedness of these. Is that one end of the coil is attached to the other end of the other coil and by galvanic action in here you create a pulse motor circuit and that's vastly different than doing it this way. And that's why this stubble field coil fascinated me so much was the interaction of the copper and steel wire or copper and iron wire like that. So anyway, I just wanted to explain to people that uh, this is not just a battery hooked up to a coil making a pulse motor. This is different. This is very, very different. Now I'm getting ready to plant this thing right here. I'm going to put that in the ground. And every time I get it wet, it comes back to life. And every time I dry it off, it just dries off and basically stops. But it'll end up looking like that in the ground, just a rusted up piece of thing. But it still makes electricity. And that's what I've been doing the last few weeks, is I've been drying this thing out, letting it stop basically, and then getting it wet again to see if it comes back to life. And it does. It does it every single time. 
so anyway I'm going to plant that little guy there and just leave it in the ground and, and just check voltages from day to day, week to week, month to month, maybe year to year and just see how that happens because what will happen is this will passivate the electrochemical reaction on those metals will form oxides on them and the, the chemical reaction will basically slow down and I don't know if you've ever pulled up something rusty that's been in the ground like an old gas pipe or something but it doesn't go away it passivates and forms a scale on it and basically um, stops corroding and that's what I want to see happen here but the secondary part of this I'm not going to go any further I don't think because that took me over an hour to wind that much wire and it's expensive so just I'm just going to show you one more time how if I add a little bit more energy to this the secondary does work works just like labor savers videos and you can see how this is speeding up the motor too and I do that now I'm going to put this on here just for a second let this rev up you see that thing blinking away and that's the secondary fire in this now this supercapacitor has about 0.8 volts in it right now that's what's in there. Okay, now I'm going to disconnect the supercapacitor. You're going to see that thing still keep on firing. Supercapacitor is not connected. That's slowly stopping now. But the motor speeded up. Anyway, that's my uh, show for today. I just wanted to show that this double field coil is one of the most fascinating things that I've ever done. The fact that you can make two coils of wire side by side, create a battery, pulse that battery, and drive a pulse motor. Thanks for watching.